I actually, when I was following your show, obviously I know about you. We all know Marcellus Wiley, your, your household name. But as I was watching your show, I noticed that the way you, 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 you approach sports media, obviously you're covering the news and giving your opinions, but you also were taking us behind the scenes in terms of the, you know, the business aspect and the reason why a lot of people are making the decisions that they make in the independent space. And I want to ask you, as someone that worked on ESPN, that worked at FS1, what what caused you to decide that you you know what I want to transition into the independent space? What was what was the thing that led you to do that? Yeah, man, I got my start in media when I was an active player. So I'm in Buffalo, and I always call myself the first Kardashian because I had a reality show in Buffalo my rookie year. Wow, um, wow, wow! I always, yeah, I had this personality where I didn't look down at the media. I looked at it. I was a man or a woman with a job, and they couldn't do what I did and I couldn't do what they do. So I was like, mm. all right, let me translate what happened on the field so you can tell everyone else, the millions of people that love what I do, mm. what's going on. So I had a mm. real healthy respect and relationship with the media. So that led me to immediately hitting the ground running in terms of having media relationships and being able to have my own broadcast career. So it started in Buffalo reality show. They used to come over to my house. Mm -hmm. I'm cooking, I'm hanging out with my family, et cetera go to the mall, talk to girls, buy hats. They're just filming all that. Whatever. This is 1997, y'all. Then wow. I'm at NFL Network before NFL Network is even open. Uh, they didn't even have hmm. facilities, really. At the same time, I was a on-the-field correspondent. So the teams that I was on when we didn't make the playoffs, I would go out there and interview Peyton Manning and LT. And wow. that was the first wow. time I realized I wanted to do this Hmm. Once I was done playing football. Hmm. Now, it was because the scrum would go around Peyton Manning and it'd be 50 reporters all trying to shove a mic in his face. <laughs> and he would look and give me the eye contact and be like, you come here because wow. that's my boy. So wow, that really wow, let me wow. know I could translate wow. this game to all those out there, the masses, and do it in a way I wanted to do it. Um, you fast forward, I'm at ESPN mm -hmm. and I worked there for 11 years. Uh, didn't go to FS1 for four years. So I've worked everywhere. And to answer your question, the thing I didn't like, there hmm. were a lot, a lot of things I loved, a ton of things I loved. Some of the things I didn't like were, one, how we didn't really take care of broadcasting the game in the way that we're supposed to do it. The mm. entertainment factor got so out of control that we were losing the education factor in terms mm. of really just helping people understand what's going on. And that's not mm. just X's and O's, it's just what the players are going through and really doing that. And I just started mm. to see us get away from that, but who am I to complain? I also didn't like how like closed we were in terms of we're doing this for the fans. We're just a medium, a conduit. Why are we all of a sudden acting like we're the stars? Like we're bigger than the players we're covering yeah. and then acting like our personalities matter more than what the production yeah. of the players is. So I was like, you know, and I'm the one that would say it on air. I would clown a dude. Like a dude would talk about another player. I'd be like, dog, he better than you. And that would just be the end of that segment. <laughs> and Kevin would be like, Marcellus, that ain't the script. That ain't what we're supposed to be doing. I was like, well, you better calm down because you got on a suit up here in this studio. He out there sweating and getting it. So what he failed in that moment. I also hated that we never told people how much money we made. I'm a former football player. Everybody knows how much money I made because right. of USA Today and websites. So I was like, why y'all up here acting like y'all the big dog? And I know how much you make. It ain't that much. Or, you know, you flexing on cats like you got it all. And I'm like, dog, I know the real. So basically I got stuck because I was a former athlete who did it at the highest level but also was on broadcast media doing it at the highest level. Right. And I wouldn't let one rob the other to pay the other. So it was just that situation. I just wanted to let people know for real what really went down. These people are human as well. Uh, right. This experience is amazing, but it's not perfect. So when right. they act like the athletes got to be perfect, I wanted to flip that energy on them and let them know they got some issues too. I wanted to ask you, as someone that worked on TV, and I, I, I don't know what that is. Just describe the transition from working for a big corporation to you saying, you know what? I want to bet on myself because a lot of people have not. It seems like a lot yeah. of people are still holding on for their life to these companies. And you were like, no, I'm willing to bet on myself and go independent. What do you think was what has been the biggest challenge for you during this transition? 
Yeah, I mean, it was a process. Look, and I think the process really started with one day my friend, Matt Lindzen, I'm out at his house at a barbecue, and he's like, man, you need to start a podcast. Now, this is coming off of Max and Marcellus. Max is already at first take. I oh. love doing radio. Everyone loved our radio show. It's real intimate when you're vulnerable on the radio versus right. even television. You get a different response. So oh. I missed radio, and he was like, just do a podcast. But this is around 2017. I'm at ESPN. I got two shows. I'm like, nah. And I'm going to be real. I looked down on podcasts at the time. I was like, mm. man, that's basement stuff. That's staying at home with mama stuff. I was like, I'm not doing that. I got two shows on ESPN. Forget it. So at that time, I didn't know this, but Pat McAfee was trying to get a show or at least interviews uh, to do the rounds at ESPN. And they said no. He couldn't get right. a show at ESPN, right? right? So mm -hmm. it's the same time I got two shows at ESPN and this guy can't even get in the door. Then 2018 happens. I go with Jason Whitlock. We do speak for yourself for two years. Jason in the middle of the night leaves and goes to the blaze after he went to the outkick first. So mm -hmm. he leaves me. Now, I wasn't mad at what he did. I was mad at how he did it because he never told me he was going to leave, even mm. though I knew he was going to leave because I have contacts and the bosses told me, co-workers told me, I'm mm. fine. Jason mm. leaves me. Now who's going to be my co-host? It was about a month or two. They were trying to figure that out. Ends up being Emmanuel Acho. Between right. that time, my agent, super agent, Nick Khan, who calls me one day and says, Marcellus, I'm going to move on for another opportunity i could be the president of wwe wrestling and wow. i got a swing for the fences i was like all right i love this guy to death to this day cobra is my guy so i mm. said i respect that gotta do it we're around the same age as well he leaves so for the last two years at fox i didn't have an agent everybody's calling wow. what's next what's next what's next what they didn't know that the seeds were being planted for me to think about doing something else. So mm. then Acho comes on and Acho know, and I have a great relationship. I've known them forever. Um, we built something. I liked our conversations. I liked our show, but he was doing what Whitlock was doing in the terms of he was planning to do the show without me or do a different show. What, what, Wasn't what, mad what, what, at what he was doing. Sorry to cut you off, but why? What, oh, yeah. what, is it, what was what? What do you think was the reason? Is it that maybe the chemistry wasn't there? Because looking at it, I mean, when I watched the show, you guys are great. So, what do you think was the reason for that? Maybe just wanted to do something different, or now, if you want to listen to the full interview with Marcellus Wiley, be sure to head over to Apple Podcasts or Spotify and search for the Dreamers Pro Show to listen to the full podcast. Or if you want to watch the video version, we will be dropping the video interview later today.